So I feel like I'm a bit of a weird case when it comes to zombies. I've gotten to round 100 on every Black Ops 3 map, yet I've not beaten a single map. Although I lie, I have actually beaten Gorod Krovi. Because in order to get to round 100 on Gorod, I beat the Easter egg, so I had the infinite perkaholic. But I've not beaten Shadows of Evil, Drazendrak, Zetsubo, Revelations. I mean, that's pretty crazy when you think about it. I've never personally been interested in the zombie storyline or the Easter eggs. I just like to survive, but I've kind of changed a little bit now. I beat every Infinite Warfare map, and the story on that game was great, and the Easter eggs I loved. And I've heard so much about the Black Ops 3 Easter eggs, and the story in general. So I did have very high expectations going into this. And I'll tell you what, man, this game did not disappoint. So Shadows of Evil is one small part of a much larger story in Zombies. So I'm going to try my best just to summarize the story surrounding this map. So Shadows of Evil takes place in Morgue City. And so initially the Shadow Man hires a reporter to find information on the four characters within this map. The reporter then passes this information onto the Shadow Man, who in turn influences each one of them to kill a person they know. The characters then awake in a twisted version of reality inside of Morgue City. And then they quickly become aware that the Shadow Man's evil and with the keepers inside of the map they work to trap the shadow man inside of the summoning key so like i said at the start of the video i've actually gone to round 100 on every black ops 3 map and also all of the chronicles maps so for this video i'm going to go over all of the setup really fast so then i can get into the more unique parts of the easter eggs so at the start here of course i do all of the rituals which give me the gate worms which allows me to open the pack a punch and i am actually using the summoning key to unlock all of this richtofen did actually find out that the summoning key was in morgue city and he tried to get the summoning key off the reporter and in turn actually killed the reporter but he couldn't get the summoning key because as you guys will remember you can only get it through the beast mode with the pack a punch open i then upgrade the hvk and also the cuda nero is probably my favorite character because he has the most interesting lines to me and also his arms and hands are kind of cool it's got a lot of rings and things it's not just bland gloves or something like that here i grab the apothecan sword and i actually really like this sword because it's a bit more balanced than the upgraded sword but i mean the upgraded sword is just so bloody cool but i would love to see something like the apothecan sword coming back to another map where it's not as op and you you can use it kind of skillfully for the high rounds. I then grab the Apothec and Servant, which I've mentioned so many times as being one of my favorite wonder weapons, and then get the upgraded sword from the Keeper. Hence why I mentioned that the Keepers help us to trap the Shadow Man in the Summoning Key. I think, anyway, Black Ops 3 Zombies is very confusing. So this is the stage where I've never been to before. Once you do the whole setup, basically, if you're going for round 100, all you gotta do is press on this book, grab the flag, and then you're kind of on your way to beating the Easter Egg. And you can probably tell that I've never done this before because I absolutely sucked at this step here and I actually failed this first flag. I actually failed quite a lot of times but I'm not going to show every single fail in this video. I think I just grabbed the wrong perks. I should have probably got rid of Widow's Wine and got Speed Caller and this would have been really really easy but because I didn't have Speed Caller it just made it super awkward with the Apothecary Servant and so in the end I just decided to use the HVK and just to clarify I meant I failed the flag step a lot. This was actually my first and only game trying to beat the Easter Egg and Shadows of Evil. The biggest difference I've found between Black Ops 3 zombies and Infinite Warfare zombies when it comes to beating the maps is that Black Ops 3 is a lot easier and it feels a lot more casual. Except for maybe Revelations. I didn't use Mega Gobblegums this whole video and I actually struggled quite a bit with Revelations just using classic ones. So pretty much you got to do two flags and then one flag at each keeper bench a total of four times. As you can see here, I'm just showing the four flags at each keeper. And then you can initiate the boss fight. So I come over into the ritual room and here... Again, this was my first and only attempt trying to do this, so I was kind of useless. There's literally one zombie behind me, and I sh and I shoot my Apothec and Servant, which wastes heaps of time. I could have easily have just shot the Shadow Man all the way to the altar then. But yeah, if you've never done this Easter egg, all you have to do is shoot the Shadow Man until he gets over to the bench and then interact with it. So I totally screwed that up, and then I had no idea what to do for like the next 30 minutes. I was trying to figure out how I engage and break the shield of the Shadow Man again. But all you got to do is run over to each of the Keepers, and then it will break the shield of the shadow man and this time i didn't worry about shooting my apothecary servant again and i just spammed the shadow man and i beat the easter egg and there you can actually see that the shadow man gets absorbed by the summoning key so this is only the solar easter egg to do the full easter egg you actually have to do a co-op although this is one of the most popular speed runs anyway and i had a lot of fun doing it it was quite simple though but now that i actually am following the story it makes a lot of sense and it's really cool for the final cutscene though richtofen appears out of a portal and grabs the summoning key out of a keeper's hand he then proceeds to thank us the shadows of evil characters and then he disappears 
So moving on to Dries and Drac, we are now with the Primus crew and they're actually inside of the giant robot. They stole it from group 935 and they're trying to seize the Ultimus version of Dempsey. Now I'm learning the story as I'm telling this basically. And so if you don't know the differences, I'm going to simplify it. The Primus crew are the younger version of the Ultimus crew and the whole story of Black Ops 3 is pretty much the Primus crew are killing all of the Ultimus crew to create a better future. However, in the intro of this map, we don't actually reach Dempsey and it actually leads us to Dries and Drac where the the ultimate Dempsey is placed in a rocket by Dr. Groff and sent to the moon. And it's our job in this game to stop the rocket from going to the moon and to kill Dempsey and absorb his soul in the summoning key. So I've always heard that Jurassic Drac has one of the best Easter eggs in Zombies history. So I was looking forward to this one. So I grabbed the KRM and then I proceed to do all of the dragon heads to get the bow. I then pack a punch the KRM and then start to get my electric bow. So I actually had to play online on this game because usually I just play offline on Black Ops 3. But for Jurassic Drac, if you play online, you only have to upgrade one of the bows. You don't have to get all four. And that's what the speedrunners do. So I just thought I'd copy them. I then place my bow into this box and get the Ragnarok DG4. In doing so i nearly go down so i use my in plane sight and you would have noticed my level came up there you'll never see that in any of my other videos like i said i'm playing online in this lobby and i'm only level 15. so this is where i've never been up to i collect the souls into this box here and then i have to shoot all of the tips of the portal here i've never done this before and i had no idea you had to do this and afterwards i can then grab my upgraded electric bow which is obviously just awesome i chose the electric bow because it is the best bow in the game i then have to shoot these four wisps with the electric bow around the map super easy step and this allows me to teleport now back in time i'm pretty sure and i pick up these parts here and also this part and here is dr groff when he locks the safe here he actually puts symbols in and we need to then put these symbols into a computer to open the safe as he puts something in the safe that we need because dr groff is controlling the rocket we are trying to figure out a way to stop the rocket from going to the moon. So Shadows of Evil was really easy, especially with the boss fight. The boss fight on Dries and Drac is a lot harder in my opinion. And so through tutorials I was watching, they mentioned to get the plunger because there's a lot of panzers at the end of the map. And with the plunger, you can one shot the panzers. To get the plunger, I just needed to activate the clock by putting my Ragnaroks down and make sure the clock lands on 935. So 935. So whilst I was waiting for the clock to get to that point, I just did some more steps in the meantime. For example, putting parts into this trap, changing the toggle, and activating the trap allowed me to put the password in on this machine that I saw earlier that Dr. Groff put into the safe. And once I've done that, the safe is then open and I can grab the parts out of it. I then place the parts into these like lightning orbs and they're going to be able to bring the rocket back down with Dempsey once I do the next couple steps here. So again, I have to activate the trap, go back to this machine and I have to memorize what the symbols are on the bottom monitors. And then whatever the top monitor is, I have to then put in what the bottom monitor was. That might sound confusing. It's really not that hard. I just wrote it down on a piece of paper. That's why you can see I'm pausing. And then I have to do it on the bottom area here by the rocket. There's another machine and I complete that and then and break my shield on purpose just so I could get a fresh one. And then I time the clock. There's actually like a little ticking noise. So I get ten, about nine seconds off 935. Then I activate the clock, wait nine ticks and then stop the clock. And you can see it lands on 935. I then go into the anti-grav area, climb on the wall there, and then it will take me back to this teleporter room and I can grab the plunger. The way the plunger works is it's not a one-shot kill on your first panzer, but once you kill one panzer, then it is a one-shot kill for about 30 seconds on any other panzers that you come across. Now, finally, with all the weird shit that we've kind of done, we can now finally grab Dempsey's rocket with the electric bulb things. I don't know. I guess they just shot the rocket down and then it conveniently, I guess, just makes its way to Jurazendrak or maybe it forces it this way. I'm not sure. But you can see the rocket coming down with Dempsey's body inside of it. Pretty cool. It knocks the bell off the top of the tower there. Pretty epic stuff, to be honest. To proceed with the Easter egg, I then have to skip around and then do four more wasps, which is of course just really easy and then i can teleport again back in time and grab two more parts well one part really i have to activate this which then gives me this little stone thing i can then place the stone over here by the krm wall by grab this artifact here which is super important to the whole store zombie storyline i'm pretty sure but like i said i only am learning the black ops 3 storyline so it gets very confusing and it's it is quite hard for me so i do apologize if i do get any of the story wrong i think it would be fun to do more videos like this and so i'll be learning you know like the black ops 1 or black ops 2 story whatever which will then fill in the background of where we're at in black ops 3 because it's it is really confusing to 
start the story at the start of Black Ops 3, but I am trying my best. With that important object that I picked up, a keeper ghost spawned and then and all I had to do was use the electric bow to kill a bunch of zombies in the circle to absorb the solves to make the keeper actually come alive from being a ghost. So that was a pretty cool step as well. The keeper then makes his way all the way down to the bottom of the anti-gravity area and he does some weird shit. I don't know what he really does, but then I can place this little blue cylinder onto the pyramid that he creates. I then get the X and 4 out of the mystery box and then pack a punch it because it's really good for the boss. Put down my Ragnaroks and this enters me into the boss fight. And the first stage of this boss fight, all I gotta do is just run around in circles. So this is the keeper, the big keeper boss, I guess. Sometimes he'll shoot skulls at you and spawn fire pits. So I just shoot the skulls and just stay away from the fire pits and there'll be skeletons spawning in. I just run away from them. There's not enough to really trap you. And then once the electricity spawns on the middle right under the keeper, I then place my Ragnaroks there and then get it out my XM4 pack a punch and shoot the keeper right in his chest. And that's the first stage done. And now we're getting into the harder part because a bunch of panzers are going to spawn in and I do have the XM4 as my secondary and the lightning bow is not that great at killing them. So this is where the plunger comes into effect and also gobble gums. I mean, I only use classic gobble gums for this video, like I said earlier. I was thinking about doing no gobble gums, but I wanted to get this video out before Modern Warfare 2. I was very wrong in that. If I knew I wasn't going to make content in Modern Warfare 2, I would have tried to do this with no gobble gums. But here, I just run around in circles, staying absolutely as far away as possible from the panzers. I kill one of them. You can see I slap with my plunger and you can see it's on fire. So then I pop in plain sight and then make my way to the other panzers and just one hit them here. I got kind of nervous because I started hitting the zombies instead of the panzer in accident. And then the in plain sight was running out of, out of time. But in the end, I did just slap the panzer in the face. And then again, we're back onto the first stage. This boss fight's pretty easy, I have to admit, with in plain sight. If I removed in plain sight, it probably would have been quite a bit harder. Again, I ran around for a certain amount of time, put my Ragnarok spikes down, then shot the keeper in the chest again. And then a bunch of panzers spawned in. This is the last time the panzers were spawned in. I feel like I got a bit better this time. I started running in the mi middle instead of just around. I think that's a much better strategy than just running around the pillars. It's better to run in and out of them. And so I'm just trying to kill the first one with my lightning bow so then I can get the fire plunger again. And you can see here, I did actually get the fire plunger and I killed my, my second panzer, eat the in plain sight gum and kill my last two panzers. And then again, I run around until I can place the Ragnaroks. And then all I gotta do is shoot the X and four into the keeper's chest again. And this time I think it might've been two shots to actually take him down. But boom, that's a Jurassic and Drac Easter egg. I felt like out of all the Easter eggs that made the most sense and it was just really fun it wasn't too complicated and it was simple enough so once i finish the boss fight it takes me out i can grab the summoning key and place it on this machine here again and dr groff was so adamant that he wanted to take ultimus dempsey to the moon to do research on him that he was actually willing to blow up jurizendrak in order to keep dempsey going towards the moon so we actually redirected those missiles to the moon where dr groff is and his facility and we blow up the moon so pretty epic ending to jurizendrak at this point rick Toffin's the only one who knows they need to actually kill the Ultimus characters. So he uses the summoning key to stop Dempsey here because obviously they don't want to kill Ultimus Dempsey until Rick Toffin explains to them that the world will be a better place or you'll be saving the world if you do kill Ultimus Dempsey. So then Dempsey sadly goes over and chooses to actually kill himself. He doesn't want Rick Toffin to do it. He wants to do it himself. And then Ultimus Dempsey's soul gets sucked up into the summoning key. After doing the Easter egg, we then get Perkaholic. So I'd love to go for like, a really high round after doing the easter egg one time and also you can see that the moon's just shattered there I really like the story of Zetsubo Noshima. So the Primus crew are traveling to find Ultimus Takio to obviously kill him and absorb his soul. But in doing so, they get captured on a boat by a group called Division 9. And Division 9 is actually a Japanese group who started the facility on Shinonuma. They then moved to an island called Zetsubo where they create a new facility where they experimented on the plants and the spiders and even some scientists there. Takio was overseeing this research for the Emperor and reported that he didn't like what he was seeing. And this is the kicker though. The Emperor actually ordered Takio here to be taken in for experimentation by the scientists. And so our goal is to get on the island and remove Takio basically from his own misery. So at the start of the game, you wash up on the island. And for the first eight or nine rounds, I just chill in the first room because I find that's just very simple. They only spawn from two windows and you can get tons of points. It's a very fun first room, especially if you're trying to just go for like a fun challenge. At this stage, I have tons of points so I can make my way all the way to the power and start grabbing parts. So I start grabbing parts to the 
unupgraded wonder weapon. I collect the plant and then I collect the serum from the spider. And then at round 10, I luckily get my last part by just killing a zombie in that area. And thus I can get the KT4, which is the wonder weapon on this map and you can actually upgrade it and you need to upgrade it for the Easter egg. I then do all of the skull rituals, which then allows me to actually unlock the skull through doing one final rituals with a bunch of keepers. I do remember when I got to round 100 and all the Black Ops 3 maps, I especially like Zetsubo just because of the skull. It's such a fun specialist and it's probably the best one in Black Ops 3. So once you beat all of the three challenges you get given at the start of the game, lightning will then strike where you get these skulls from. And so I got that on my shield and I can then hit the cage here, which will then lower me and I can pick up this vial here, which is my first part to upgrade the KT4. So if you have watched my round 100 on every Black Ops 3 map, I never even got the KT4 or upgraded it. So I never had to do the spider step. So I haven't done the spider step in a very long time. I think back in the day, I did get the upgraded KT4, but I've never done the Easter egg, like I said. This spider was really easy. I was not expecting it. I just spammed my HPK in his face with the hip fire. And I don't think the spider did any damage to me at all. Once I did kill him though, he collapsed and created a bridge for me to go across and grab one of his, I guess, teeth or pincers, which is my second part to the upgraded KT4. I then take this vent here, which I need to get rainbow water from. I missed it a few times, but on this attempt, I just spammed my interact button and I just picked it up anyway. And so to get my third part for the KT4, I then need to go all the way down to the bottom of this cave or the water cave, I guess. Mesmerize this wall here, which will make it disappear and then fill the soil with the rainbow water and also a plant seed. And then each round after that, I need to fill it up until it's the third round and I can finally pick it up. And now I can get the upgraded KT for the Masamune. So like I said in the intro, Division 9 did a lot of experimentation with the plants and so we can actually exploit that to get a massive bullet to shoot down a plant to give us a cog to go down an elevator. And so I need to grow this plant by filling it three times once around. And so in between doing that, I do some other steps to get some more cogs. So I make sure I get my electric shield again through the lightning and then hit the zip line with the electric shield. And as soon as I interact, I then knife, which takes me off and I can get my second cog. And then I get anywhere but here, which then sends me to a location you can only get to using the gobble gum. And I pick up my second cog. And then finally at round 24, my plant is fully done and I can get the massive bullet. And I put it into this massive weapon here. I have to wait a while for the plane to come and shoot the plane. You can actually miss the plane. So I was kind of worried here. And then I can actually see the cog, the third and final cog we need to go down the elevator flying there. And it just landed right behind me, which is super close and nice because apparently it can land in a lot of different spots. I then add the three cogs to the elevator and I can now start the boss fight. So again, going back to the intro, the emperor ordered Takio to give himself over to the experimentation. And this is what has happened to him. Takio is actually the boss that we verse on this map, which is really cool. And I remember always thinking when I was like 14 or 15, that Zetsubo was a really hard map and that it was never worth even attempting to beat it. And now I look back on it and it's really not that hard of a map whatsoever. The boss fight is a little bit lame. No offense, Zetsubo. I love the map. I really do. I feel like there's a lot of people that hate the map. I really don't know why. From a high round perspective, from a casual perspective, I really enjoyed the Easter egg as well. Although the boss fight is pretty easy. I don't think it's, I don't think it's stupidly easy. I mean, towards the end here, I actually nearly go down. The whole boss fight is just you shoot the branches off of Tarkio, I guess. And if I didn't have in plain sight, I probably would have failed here. So that would have been incredibly embarrassing, especially because this is actually so easy. And with the final cutscene, Ultimus Takio appears again. For some reason, we've like just destroyed all of the mutation on him, although he definitely doesn't look well. And then he admits to Primus Takio that it was actually the Emperor who has done this to him, basically. And so the only thing left is for Ultimus Takio to die so that the Primus crew can then absorb his soul in the summoning key. Overall, I really like Zetsubo, and I feel like this map gets way too much hate. And also, I love how you get Perkaholic after all of the Easter eggs. Gorod Krovi takes place during the Battle of Stalingrad, but it's not just the normal battle, it's actually fought between zombies, dragons, and mechs. The dragons were resurrected by Group 935 and Division 9, and the mechs were created by the Russians who got the blueprints off the giant robots you saw in Origins from Group 935. And so this is where we find angry and drunk Nikolai, which doesn't make it easy to kill him and absorb his soul. 
And in the intro, he does try and kill us before a dragon picks him up and throws him into a bunch of rubble where he can't get out of. So our job is to reach him, kill him, and then use the summoning key on him. So like I said in the intro, I have done Gorod Krovi before, but I had no idea what was going on in the story. So firstly, I turn on the power and then do the three graph modules, which gives me the network circuits that I can place here that allow me to command a dragon and I can then ride it to another area. The only reason we can do this is because Sophia is on the map and she is actually Maxis's assistant, but in machine form because she was going to become a zombie and Maxis took out a brain and put it in a machine. And so Sophia is pretty much in charge of this facility and she was working on getting control of some of the dragons. At round 10, I get the Raygun Mark III, which is awesome. And then I pack a punch at round 12. And also at round 12, I can get the dragon specialist and I can make the dragon fly and then punch the safe here and grab my six statue. So I grabbed six statues. I'm not going to show them all in this video because it will take a long time. And also I showed it all on my Black Ops 3 round 100 video. So if you do want to see every single step in detail for Gorod Krovi, go and check out that video. But otherwise we move forward. Once I collected all six of the statues, I can then do six different challenges. The first one I got was to actually shoot Dr. Gersh three times with my double pack-a-punch wonder weapon. Dr. Gersh will be absorbed or actually killed by Sophia. And Dr. Gersh is actually a character that goes back very far in the timeline, but I don't really know who he is. All I know is Sophia kills him in a horrible, painful death. The next challenge I had to do was escort a damaged Valkyrie all the way from the spawn room back to Sophia, where she can then take her in. And I actually get trapped here. I nearly go down. If you've noticed, I haven't actually gone down this entire video because I don't pick up Quick Revive. So that's probably the closest call so far in the video, although we'll get to Revelations. And like I said, I kind of struggled a little bit with Revelations. The main strategy I use on this step is just to slow down the zombies. I like how the Raygun Mark III works very well on this map for the actual Easter egg itself. And in general, Black Ops 3 does a really good job of that. It makes it so the wonder weapons are perfect for a certain situation in the Easter egg, except for maybe Shadows of Evil. The next challenge I got was to protect this graph module, which is very easy. I then had to use my specialist and then release the dragon so then he can pick up a package that I then will give to Sophia. And then we're on to our next step. And for this step, it was the bomb step. And this is probably the scariest one. You just need to defuse six different bombs in a certain order in three minutes. Though I've gotten pretty good at it. I just write down the order on a piece of paper and like quadruple check it each and every single time I go to a single bomb. For this next challenge, I have to bring a special mangler to Sophia. And overall, I really like how all these challenges work. And in general, Gorod Krovi is a pretty great map. It has a really good balance of not too hard and not too easy and also not too complicated. It just sits right in the perfect position. And the story and the battle is just awesome. The last challenge we always get, but I wouldn't really consider it much of a challenge, is to put a disc that Sophia gives us into this machine, which starts a download progress. You just need to kill about five manglers and then leave the last one alive and you can just run around in a circle in this building and no more manglers will spawn in. Once it's done though, I grab the key card again and make my way back to Sophia. I do get in plain sight before going to this boss fight. Otherwise, this will happen. I'm sure if I had a lot more practice, I would have been able to beat the boss without in plain sight. But like I said, I thought I could get this video out before Modern Warfare 2. And in hindsight, I would have liked to beat these maps without using any gobble gums. But it is what it is, and that would have probably taken a while. I then get given a power core from Sophia and use my dragon to give it to Nikolai. And one of the cool parts about this map is that Sophia was helping us while we were helping Sophia. We helped free Sophia to look for her long lost love, which is Maxis while she helps us get to Nikolai. So I really like that juxtaposition between the two characters. I then jump down into this tunnel here, which will then spit us out into the boss battle arena, from which I hit this red button, which activates the lasers of a giant robot's eyes that actually destroy the rubble off of the mech that Nikolai actually uses. At this stage in the boss fight, Nikolai then joins us to take down the dragon. I guess he sees the dragon as more of a threat than we are to him. And Nikolai really helps us because he shoots the dragon and then we can finish off the dragon with the mark three and it's pretty cool when the dragon dies i just finished house of the dragon so it was fun to kill a dragon in a video game after doing that but this was only the easy part of the easter egg we then need to of course kill nikolai although nikolai will not go down without a fight we tell him that the only way the evil in this universe will be vanquished is if he surrenders to us and he has none of it of course he's drunk and angry and as you saw from the clip before without in plain sight this, this boss fight is pretty hard i believe 
I don't know what the community's consensus is on it, but if you do use a gobble gum, just use in plain sight and you can kill him in like 10 seconds. It's pretty overpowered and kind of stupid. Although it is really satisfying to defeat him like that, I have to admit. Now, the reason Nikolai is so angry and also is drinking himself into a hole, because in 1941, his wife was killed in a German invasion into the Soviet Union, whilst his brother was also killed in the Battle of Stalingrad. So he turns to vodka and despair. Primus Nikolai then acknowledges this, and Ultimus Nikolai was having none of it. He then gets pretty mad, shoots Primus Nikolai in the chest plate, and then boom, the shotgun gets pulled out. See you later, Ultimus Nikolai. And then the soul gets sucked up into the summoning key. And that's it. So now we've collected all of the Ultimus souls that we needed, and now it's time to go to Revelations. After collecting all of these souls in the summoning key, we then travel to Agatha, which you can translate to the final universe or paradise, the place above creation. And so this is where the happy ending could have been if it just wasn't for Maxis. So if you remember in Shadows of Evil, we absorbed the Shadow Man's soul into the summoning key. And so he's still in the summoning key and Maxis starts to hear voices coming from the summoning key, which is the Shadow Man. He gets manipulated and in turn, as Dr. Monty likes to say, he releases is a bigger bastard. The Shadow Man then sets the world into doom. The Shadow Man allows for the Apothecans to be free in Agatha, and then the most powerful and evil entities in all of the existences that ever existed. And so it falls to us again to kill the Shadow Man and set the world right again. So the start of Revelations is pretty epic. I never knew this back in the day, but that's actually an Apothecan who swallows the Pack-a-Punch machine, and we have to go into its stomach. I mean, if that isn't epic, I don't know what is. Without me knowing of the story though, I just thought it was some monster that we're inside of. But now it makes total sense. The very first thing I do on this map is shoot the tombstones, which will allow me to do an easter egg later on. I complete all of the four corruption engines, which are essentially just like the rituals on Shadows of Evil, the graph modules on Gorod Krovi, and the dragons on Dorizendrak. And already I'm doing things I've never done before. I summon the Keeper Protector, and I drag him all the way over to this jump pad, and then I just have to protect him for three minutes. It did get super awkward though, because a Marg was spawned in. And this is the first time ever a Margo had spawned in on this step. I did fail Revelations actually a couple times. God Krovi I only failed once and that was about it. So I thought the Margo would actually just destroy my Keeper Protector, but he didn't. He couldn't destroy him, even though he was slamming him like crazy. So I just focused on killing all the zombies and making sure I got the part that the Keeper Protector will give me, which evidently was a film reel. I then get the Apothecan Servant out of the mystery box. So there's obviously a lot of weap wonder weapons on this map. It is a super overpowered map, but there are also a lot more bosses and a lot more random shit happening on this map in general. And to upgrade the Apothecan Servant, I just have to shoot the five squares in the sky. I then get little Arnies, which allows me to move on to my next step after the Keeper Protector. And this step makes it so I have to go inside the belly of the Apothecan, which of course is very sick like I mentioned before. And the Pack-a-Punch machines here, I also shoot it out of its gut. I know Revelations get some hate, but it's really a sick map when you think about it. And I always have loved it casually. I did do the challenge where I started on round 100 and got to 200 on this map. Map. But this step is I just need to throw nine little Arnies in these holes in his stomach. Every time I do three of them, Margas will spawn in and I have to kill all three of the Margas. And you gotta hope you get a max ammo to get another pair of little Arnies to keep on doing the step. Usually I would have the Thunder Gun for this step against the Margas because it's just super overpowered. But the HVK Pack a Punch is actually pretty good. And it seems that these Margas actually have less health, just like the Sword Step on Shadows of Evil. Those Margas aren't the fully helped Margas, they're kind of like one shot in the face. And then Pack a Punch the Apothecan Servant, and then finish off the little Arnies. One thing I never even noticed on Revelations, or I did notice, but I just never cared about, is that there are actual different elemental Margos. I swear it really doesn't matter. I don't know, in the comment section, do you guys prefer any Margos? Like, are any more powerful than the others? Because I've never noticed it. I then grab my second film reel, and then start my third step, where I have to shoot these little rocks in the map, and then bones will spawn, and then I need to shoot those bones with the upgraded Apothecan Servant. This is, again, a very chill step. I feel like Revelations does go a little bit random though. Like this step here, I don't really understand why we actually do it. And it just seems a bit repetitive. We do a lot of things five times where there's a lot of running back and forth. Where Dreisendrak especially didn't feel like we were running back and forth around the map for no reason. Once I do shoot all of the bones, the bones will spawn in the middle of this room here. And then I have to shoot the bones with the Apothecan Servant. And then a body will spawn there and I have to shoot the body with the Apothecan Servant. And then I get my third film room. 
unreal. Now we're getting really close to the boss fight. So I get the dingo and also the thunder gun. And then I use the corruption engines to line up with these like little crystals outside of the map. I do this four times, which then allows me to activate Sophia, who's going to help us in bringing peace back to this world, which is really cool. I like Sophia as a ca character. She's really cool. And she takes us all the way into Kino de Tone and we teleport into Samantha's room, I believe, um, and pick up this book. And I remember every single time I got in here, I would puzzle out who was winning the chess game. I think it was white in that situation. I then put the book on this podium here, which will allow me to get more eggs. But before I do that, I try and get my free perk through using the anti-gravity in the revelations area, which again is another cool Easter egg. I just don't really know why this map gets a, a lot of hate. I can kind of see the Easter egg steps can be a bit obnoxious. That's the main issue I have, and it takes a while, and there's also glitches. But other than that, I really like this map. And now I am onto the egg step, so I've got to pick up four eggs around the map and then put them into this, I don't know what you would call this, some bizarre looking alien thing in the Apothecan's belly. Kind of disgusting that we're putting eggs into the Apothecan. Uh, yeah, weird. I then pack a punch the dingo and the thunder gun. I can then fill up these eggs in the Apothecan, which will then give me gate worms. And with these gate worms, I can then get symbols, which I'm going to need in the first kind of version of the boss fight that I'm heading into right now. So I have to look at this book and this book is the Cronorium, which I really don't know much about. Again, I'm coming in a Black Ops 3. So I know a lot about the Black Ops 3 story, but there's a lot of things from previous games that I don't really know about yet that haven't been explained to me. But I use the Cronorium anyway to find out these, the order in which I need to place the symbols I got from the gate worms. And then I get a max ammo. And this is the step. It's a very bizarre step. Without the thunder gun, it would probably be a pain in the ass to do. I have to kill two Margas each stage. And each stage has like a different elemental vibe, I guess. So the first Margua, I just wipe out. If you see the Margua spawning in, you can immediately kill him with the thunder gun. But I tried to do it again and I had to reload so I didn't have enough time. Super chill though, I have to admit, with the thunder gun. Although I was quite frightened and I did actually fail one time on this step because I didn't know if you do damage to a Margua, don't run through him because he does a shit ton of damage to you, which I probably should have known that anyway. And I always did try and throw down a little Arnie just to make this a little bit easier. And doing this Easter egg, it kind of made more sense to me why they did add all of this OP shit into this mystery box. And so after doing all the four stages of the different elements killing two Margos, I can then pick up the summoning key and now I'm going to have to throw it at a bunch of shit. So I actually failed most of my times by the bowl just glitching out because I didn't understand that you need to melee when you go through teleporters. And also it's the bowl's just so glitchy in general. So I killed every zombie but one, obviously just so it's a bit easier when I try and throw this bowl at five different locations. I will admit though, holding the summoning key like this is really cool in the game seeing that we've seen it all through Black Ops 3 and it is one of my favorite objects within the game. I know that sounds lame as hell, but it's actually just really cool. I then get a max ammo and it's time to go into the boss fight. So this boss fight in solo is pretty chill. All I've got to do, I have to put the summoning key here and then kill around 20 zombies, I would say. I do have to be careful though because a panzer spawns in and they're bloody annoying. I throw a little Arnie and then pick up the charge summoning key, throw it at Sophia who then enables us to shoot the shadow man. And I kind of sucked here. I'm not going to lie. I tried to zoom in. This step's really hard with only classic gobble gums. Or maybe I just suck. So we're trying to shoot the Shadow Man into the mouth of the Apothecan and then activate the book. Um, so I can try it again on another ritual area. This time I use In Plague Society and I only use the hip fire of the Dingo and I absolutely smash it out. There is a Margaret right behind me though because I was kind of scared. But boom, he was right in the mouth of the Apothecan and then I hit the Cronium. It does a laser beam into the Shadow Man and we've beat Revelations. We've beat every Black Ops 3 zombies map. And now it's time for the ending of the Black Ops 3 story. So in the end, the Primus crew saved the universe with the help of Sophia and also Max's, because you got to remember Max's is in the summoning key. And now Agatha is back to peace. But there's some issues. The Primus crew shouldn't be able to exist at this current stage. The only reason they can is because Rick Toffin has taken blood from other characters you saw in the story, kept them in these blood vials, and at the beginning of Revelations, he actually gave them to all of the Primus crew. And so this has created a paradox where the Primus crew can exist whilst Dr. Monty, this gentleman right here, will actually not exist. And Dr. Monty doesn't want that. So he sends the Primus crew to the Great War. And in the Great War, they saved everyone again. But this is the end of their cycle and then they will start again where they first met at Origin. This cycle never breaking until Black Ops 4, which really leaves me to wanting to beat all of the Black Ops 4 maps and find out how this ends.